Hey everybody, Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my video today. Um, today's topic has to do with some of the new rules that have just been brought down by the CDC regarding travel for cruise ship passengers. Pretty severe restrictions coming out and uh, we'll get into those in just a second. Thank you all of you out there who are subscribing to Traveling with Bruce. I uh, cannot thank you enough for joining the channel. <clears throat> Those of you giving my videos thumbs ups, thank you very much. It really helps my analytics. All of you commenting on my videos, I uh, appreciate it very much, especially those of you who are letting me know any news developments that you're coming across, whether you have friends that are uh, crew members, family members, um, any, any news out there that's going on behind the scenes, thank you for giving me a heads up so that I can stay on top of the news for everybody else. Those of you who have joined us on Facebook, if you like hanging out with TWB members, we have a Facebook group page called Traveling with Bruce. Come on over there. Ask to join the Facebook group page. I'll let you in. I'm the administrator. We're having some fun there. And also thank you to all of you, all of you out there who are now following us on Instagram. Jennifer is handling the Instagram page, and I appreciate that very much as well. Welcome one, welcome all to TWB. All right, let's talk about the latest developments that uh, the news has just come out. Uh, it's first thing in the morning here for me. It's, it's March the 6th, 2020, and I got to tell you, the news coming out of the CDC is going to be devastating as far as I'm concerned for cruise lines. Um, I don't know if the rest of the uh, YouTube community will pick up on this, but uh, here it is. Um, the CDC has basically told uh, cruise lines that if you're going to have passengers, American passengers in particular, uh, at the very least, um, taking a cruise, and um, once the, the ship returns back, to a U.S. port for disembarkation, um, you, the cruise line, are responsible to get every American resident on these ships back to their homes without using any form of public transportation that the United States uh, has. So just to give you an idea, let's just suppose you're coming back from a cruise to the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, as people like to tell me it is, you're coming back from the Caribbean and uh, you're going to get off the ship in Miami or Fort Lauderdale or, or, or uh, Port Canaveral. The cruise line has to arrange private transportation for you back to, say, the airport. Let's say you flew in from, uh, oh, you flew in from St. Louis, the middle of the United States. They have to arrange private transportation, probably a charter bus um, approved by the government to the airport. In the case of uh, Miami, it would be Miami International, most likely, or Fort Lauderdale. Then you have to uh, be uh, taken to a private charter aircraft to St. Louis. Then you have to be transported by private transportation from the airport in St. Louis to your home. And you, as a cruise ship passenger, are now under a 14-day isolation lockdown in your house. Let me ask you this question, just off the top of my head. Uh, how many of you folks out there who love to go cruising uh, would be interested in picking up a cruise from Carnival or Royal Caribbean or Norwegian or any of the cruise lines where you know that um, if you get to the airport, uh, if you get to Miami, uh, you can get there on your own, I suppose, uh, fly one way on, on an airline. Um... Good luck finding a hotel right now. There aren't any available. But let's say the hotels are open. You find a hotel. You spend the night. The next day, you get a, a, a bus ride to the airport, just like it used to be. You get a bus ride, I'm sorry, to the ship, just like it used to be. You're at the cruise ship terminal. You check in. You get on board. You have a one-week cruise. And then at the end of the cruise, you now are going to be transported back home by the cruise line. Uh, something tells me the cost of cruising has just skyrocketed. Uh, <laughs> if the cruise line is responsible for getting 3,500 people from a cruise ship back home, um, I don't know how they can do it because uh, you might live in St. Louis. That's great. Let's say you live within a 10-mile radius of the St. Louis International Airport. Oh, fantastic. But if you live in uh, Des Moines, Iowa, 
um, there won't be a charter flight to Des Moines, Iowa. I mean, come on. How many passengers on board a cruise ship are from Des Moines, Iowa? Um, I don't know how you're going to get home by via private uh, means where it's affordable. If you live in Chicago, I get it. I have some fantastic viewers from Chicago. I can see the airline having, you know, 200 people live in the Chicago area. They charter a flight with 200 people and fly them back. But don't forget, who's going to pay for that charter flight? You might say, oh, the cruise line's going to pay for it. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think the uh, the passenger's going to pay for that. Uh, that's going to be part of your cruise. Um, can you imagine making a booking with a cruise line where the first question from the agent is, uh, oh, hi, Mr. Mrs. Jones. Um, question for you. Uh, where do you live? Oh, we're from Denver. Oh, oh great, great. Um, you're looking at a one-week cruise on ship whatever. Uh, fantastic. The uh, the balcony is uh, $700 a person. Uh, taxes and fees uh, for port charges and stuff for $200 a person. Oh, and the supplementary CDC transportation charge to get you home, even though you could fly on your own. I mean, you can always fly Southwest Airlines and get home. Um we have to send you back. That's a thousand dollars a person. The next sound that the agent is going to hear at the cruise line is this sound, click, because uh, you've just hung up the telephone. Um, cruising has just been knocked off by the CDC. Uh, cruise lines may want to start cruising again in May. Um, there's no way there will be a single cruise ship leaving a single U.S. port with paying passengers. Uh, because of the new CDC guidelines. Um, at the moment, it's still unclear how foreign passengers are going to be treated. Um, I will say this much. Right now, as I'm talking to you in this video, the uh, Coral Princess is in the Miami Harbor. It's all docked up, and uh, she's at the pier. They've been trying to offload their passengers to get them home, and... Uh, uh, the, the cruise line has been successful with some of the nationalities, but apparently no Canadians have been allowed off the ship, whether they feel ill or not, because with the new CDC rules, Canadians cannot board an Air Canada flight out of Miami to, say, Toronto and get home or, or any other airline. They have to be taken back to Canada through a charter flight, and uh, that's a private flight. And <laughs> A Canadian can book a one-way ticket from Miami to Toronto on Air Canada. Normally would run about $300, 250 350 somewhere in that range, normally. Uh, charter, <clears throat> you want to you wanna book an entire aircraft? Um, th th you're in the wild, wild west now. Uh, you're dealing with either airlines or charter airline companies who can charge whatever the heck they want because they know the cruise line is up against the wall. They've got to get these people off the ship every Every 24 hours that these people are sitting on that cruise line, the cruise line's got to feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. they gotta, they got to take care of all the hotel needs of these people because they're stuck on board the ship. The, the cruise line is losing millions of dollars a day that these people are on there. They have to now pay whatever the ransom is to the cruise lines to get them home. I'm uh, sorry, not the cruise lines. They have to pay the ransom to the airline, the charter airlines, to get them out of there. And uh, until the CDC gives them the blessing can't do it. So private bus charter, private air charter, and then the Canadians have to be brought to their homes through private transportation. Now, under U.S. rules, the Americans can't tell Canadians how to travel in their own country. So I can imagine that once they're in Toronto, they can figure out their own way home from there. But the Canadian government, of course, is insisting that anyone who comes into the country has to self-quarantine for 14 days. Uh, what's going to happen now? Are Canadians going to be allowed to fly from, say, Toronto to Vancouver if they live on the West Coast, or Toronto to Montreal or Halifax, and, and then self-quarantine? Or do they have to self-quarantine in Toronto in a hotel for two weeks before they can then finish their flight home? You can see going forward, <laughs> if you're thinking of a cruise in May or June, if these rules are in place... There will be no foreigners coming into the United States, first of all. There will be no domestic Americans flying into the cruise ports anywhere, whether it's the cruise port in Los Angeles, San Diego, uh, whether it's my any of the Florida ports, any of the, uh, floor, uh, the ports in Texas, Gulf Coast, New York. There's no way. The rumor now that's flying about 
is in the next 10 days to two weeks that all air services in the United States are about to be suspended. Up here in Canada, we're sitting around here going, why hasn't this been done a month ago? Um, there are so many people flying all over the place in the U.S. who don't know they have the virus spreading it unknowingly to everyone. Um, I've been waiting for statistics to come out from, uh, from airline crews. Uh, how many airline attendants, uh, uh, airport staff, gate staff, uh, ticketing staff have caught the virus from the passengers. The, the, this, you know, remember, we're dealing with a worldwide pandemic here. We're not dealing with a pandemic of cruise passengers. We're dealing with a pandemic, period. Um, cruise passengers have just been told, however, by the CDC, you folks are special. You folks are persona non grata. You're not invited to uh, any airport, any bus station, any railroad station. Um, you have to find your own way back through the cruise line. We're not allowing you as an individual American to find your way home. We will restrict your movements off of a cruise ship um, to only allow you to move if a cruise ship pays for it and arranges it with CDC approval. So folks, um, until this uh, restriction is r removed, uh, there will not be a single cruise ship leaving a U.S. port, period, to go anywhere. And uh, uh, the cruise lines may want to restart sailings in May. It's not going to happen. We, we, may, uh, we might have something here that uh, could last three, four, five, six months, and uh, there won't be a single cruise leaving America. The only way an American would be allowed to take a cruise is if they flew to a cruise ship in another country, and that country had rules that would allow passengers to board and onboard and go at their will. But I can tell you that you come back from a cruise to Southampton in the United Kingdom, you have to self-quarantine yourself for two weeks in a hotel. Um, you uh, end your cruise in Rome in Italy. How many, how many would like to, uh, put up your hands right now, how many would like to end a cruise right now in Rome? Uh, you end up in Rome right now, um, the uh, cruise port just outside of the city, you're quarantined for two weeks. So if you know that taking a cruise anywhere guarantees you a two-week quarantine at the end of the cruise, at whatever port you've landed at, are you going? I, I don't think so. I, you know, is your boss waiting for you to come back to work? Uh, can you handle the expense of uh, paying for a two-week hotel stay in a foreign country with all meals and expenses? Uh, can you handle three, four, five hundred a night for two weeks and then try to get home? And when you do get back to the United States, the government automatically puts you in lockdown for two more weeks because you were overseas. Uh, folks, this is going to be uh, the death knell of uh, cruising for a while. Um, and I keep referring to all of all of this back to one thing. People ask me all the time, Bruce, when can I go on my cruise again? When can we, when can we travel again? I, re I will say to you folks, when Las Vegas opens the strip and starts allowing pa uh, people to go into strip motel hotels and gamble again on the casino floor, then things are back to normal. When airlines are operating at, say, full schedule again or announcing full schedule startups, things are back to normal. Uh, when the CDC stops telling Americans <laughs> how to travel in their own country, things will be back to normal. But right now, things are not normal. And um, whether you're governor or whether you're president or whether you're prime minister or whether you're... Uh, elected leaders tell you to uh, stay in your homes or not uh, my little piece of advice stay in your homes don't go anywhere um, do a self-imposed lockdown it's scary out there and uh, it doesn't show any signs at the moment of really lightening up and uh, I'm sorry to bring this grim news to all of you I'd like to uh, bring you nothing but happy positive exciting travel news especially in the cruise world but at the moment i can't and i want to be straight with you out there uh, the restrictions are getting worse and worse and worse and uh, i don't even think we've hit the height of the uh, problem yet but as i've promised you before i will keep following it and stay on top of the story thank you for tolerating this video and sorry for its length but uh, man there's a lot we have to think about please stay warm stay safe stay healthy Join me Monday nights at 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock for my live shows. 
7 o'clock for uh, sponsor members, and 8 o'clock for everybody. And we'll keep talking about this topic going forward. We'll be there together, and we'll get through it. Thanks again, everybody. Bye for now.